Hello everyone, I'm John from Nature Nerds Rule. And I'm Tom. And this is a first in, in a number of shorts focused on wildlife in western Massachusetts. Um, this first one is going to be on bobcats. We're going to be focusing on the natural history as well as how to track them in the fields, in the forests, maybe in your own backyard. Uh, speaking of backyards, we're in Tom's backyard and uh, we've had a wonderful time this past week, haven't we? Yes, we have. It was very enjoyable, day and night. We didn't yeah. know which, which, how many times to look out the window to see what was here. Uh, what happened was a deer, beautiful eight-point buck, got hit by a car here on the road. It's a very busy road. And it got killed. We checked with Mass Wildlife. They didn't care where we, what we did with it as long as we just got rid of it. They didn't want it and it had already been dead for about 36 hours so the meat had been spoiled so we simply dragged it into the backyard hoping that something would find it to eat it up and boy did they ever find yeah. it John. Yeah well and we set up my remote camera to really try to get a view of, of what was coming in and wait till you see some of the shots of the bobcat as well as a lot of other wildlife came in. Surprising the number of things that did come yeah. in especially during Amazing. the daytime the birds. What came in? We had turkey vultures uh -huh. on uh, February 1st. That was the earliest wow. I've ever had turkey vultures. We had a lot of ravens, barred owl, and That's a cooper's right. hawk feeding on it also during the day. Uh, the only thing that surprised me, we didn't have any blue jays feeding on it. Oh. I thought they would uh, feed on that, but we didn't see any. But certainly had a lot of other activity here in the yard, day uh -huh. and night. It's been a lot of fun. Wow, great. Well, um, let's, let's give a look. So as you know, Tom, there is DNA evidence that a mountain lion has been in the Quabbin, but at this point there isn't evidence of a breeding population. Also north of us, there's the lynx, with its incredible broad paws that it uses as snowshoes to travel over the snow. But here in western Massachusetts, there's just one wildcat, and that's the incredible bobcat. The bobcat has also been known as the bay lynx, wildcat, red lynx, and swamp tiger. They average about three feet in length, weighing between 15 and 25 pounds, so they're not too large. But it has very sharp teeth with four canines to pierce into the prey. They have five retractable claws in the front paws and four in the back to add to its armament. And of course, the short bob tail in the back gives them their name. What you also want to look for on the tail is that it has a little white tip where if you're up north in the north country, a lynx would have a pure black tail. Oh, look at those ears, the black, it almost, black and white almost looks like a set of eyes in the back of his head looking behind it, protecting it. Do you think that's why it evolved with those colors? Because everything else on the bobcat is really fitting into the camouflage. Camouflage, yeah. Yeah, yeah but the, the ears just stand out. It's amazing. So take a look at this shot I got of a bobcat over in the reservoir area. It was moving through. Look at how it fits in color-wise. It's just amazing. Bobcats really have great coloring to camouflage themselves, don't they? That looks like it's blending into the fall colors very nicely yeah, right there. Yeah, it really does. But then take a look at this picture too. This is amazing in the way that it fits. Their sharp sense of light, smell, and hearing make them very conscious of what's going on in the forest. Their pupils are slit-shaped rather than round and can open wide to let in light because they're mainly nocturnal. The retinas have extensive light-sensitive rods and an additional reflecting layer that makes prey stand out sharply from its background. That's why when photographing them at night, their eyes glow Look at the eyes on this one.
Hey Tom, I read a great article in the February 2017 National Geographic documenting the small wild cats of the world. Although the big cats get most of the attention, like lions and tigers, did you know that 12 of the 18 most threatened wild cats are the small cats? These include the Caracal of Asia, the Iberian lynx of Spain, and the African golden cat. But our bobcats are doing fine. They are very elusive, solitary, and mostly nocturnal. Paul Resendez, one of the best trackers in the Northeast, theorizes that this elusiveness may explain why bobcats have never been completely pushed out of New England forests, even though they've been hunted as mercilessly as other predators. The bobcat's range has actually increased since colonial times. We all thought that the coyotes were a more dominant species over the bobcat. This was one tough bobcat. He stood his ground on this carcass. Yeah, look at that. That bobcat went right up to that coyote. That's amazing. They have a huge range of anywhere from 12 square miles for females up to 36 square miles for males, patrolling the area diligently, marking with feces, urine, and scraping posts. They can travel up to five miles a night hunting and patrolling. Many times they have specific places high on a hill called a hunting bed, where they rest and see prey moving below. They eat everything from small animals, mice, squirrels, chipmunks, rabbits, and birds, but can take a muskrat, mink, skunk, fish, frogs, insects, even foxes. They may even take a small or sick deer, or in this case, our dead deer. Wow, look at the bobcat going to town on the deer now. Interesting how he's pulling off the deer hair first so we can get to the meat. Look at this shot, Tom. Yes, it's very action-packed because it's covering up the deer carcass with the pine needles on the ground around it. Also, you can looks very heavy. I think it's had a very heavy feed this night and it's uh, about ready to leave. Go yeah. rest. It's a bit chubby, isn't it? <laughs> One of my favorite pictures is the one where it looks like a lioness from the Serengeti Plains. I tracked this pregnant female in Leeds and then set up my remote camera. Tom, I got 23 pictures of a snowstorm and one picture of this beautiful bobcat. Isn't she beautiful? Oh, it's a beauty. I love the spots on the leg. Yeah, and look, it even got the pink in the nose. So they mate in late February or March. After about two months, they have one to six kittens born in a den in a rock crevice, a hollow log, or under a windfall tree really deep in the forest. Females guard their litters diligently because males will try to kill and eat the young. And now for a nature nerd's quiz. Which movie title would be appropriate for a bobcat video? La La Land? Fifty Shades of Grey, The Matrix, or Manchester by the Sea? If you chose Fifty Shades of Grey, then you were correct, but probably not for the reason you think. You see, bobcats are colorblind. They can only see shades of grey. In terms of tracking, cats, including bobcats, have asymmetrical toes, somewhat like our own hands, with a middle toe, like our middle finger, leading to a great mnemonic taught to me by Susan Morse, the great tracker from Vermont. She calls it catitude. They're always giving us the middle finger, or the middle toe in their case. Bobcats have five toes in the front foot, but only four registered because the fifth is high up and rudimentary. 
The front part of the heel pad has two lobes and the rear part has three. When walking, they, they, your small hind feet usually register directly in the larger track of the foreprint, but as it picks up speed, they become paired prints with a smaller hind print actually in front of the foreprint. Bobcat prints are no greater than two and a half inches in length or width, and the straddle, or the width between the outside of the left and right prints, is between four and seven inches. Sometimes a big house cat leaves prints that maybe a small bobcat would make. And like all cats, the bobcat has retractable claws and are drawn up into toe pads, so you seldom see the claws register on the tracks. So that was our amazing Bobcat. We hope you enjoyed everything that we put together for you. There's two books that I'd like to recommend. The first is Paul Resendez's book, Tracking in the Art of Seeing. It's a wonderful book. It's probably the best book around for tracking animals in um, the Northeast. And the second one is this little book called Animal Tracks of New England. And I keep it in my pocket wherever I go. It's, it's uh, written by Sheldon Hartson and Elbrook. And it's just a wonderful reference that you can carry around with you. Um, until next time, take an hour or two out of your schedule and get out into the forest and fields and enjoy yourself. Remember, go wild. So, um, <laughs> let me take a breather. We're having too much fun here. Yeah, too much. Now, get serious here. Okay, serious. Serious face. <laughs> yeah, serious face. I didn't so. even shave this one. I'd better go back and shave. Cut. <laughs> Make up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, so uh, let me take okay, a breath. Enough silliness yeah. here. So. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Nature Nerds Rule. I'm John, and I'm Tom. 